Okay. You know, here's the start spinning when you are using it for long hours, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now tell me the answer. What do you think? Or you can think anything. Yeah, uh, I it's um it'll be easier for uh, aldehyde. Yeah, aldehyde because you can see that. Every hydrogen has electrons, so there will be ripples and in nucleophile and their electrons. And you can see there is no crowd, so it can easily attack on aldehyde as compared to this because there are bulky groups on ketone as compared to aldehyde. So this is uh, this is steric factor basically tells you that the reaction will be faster in aldehyde as compared to this ketone because a steric factor here is more than aldehyde that's so. so this is what introduced as a steric factor. first a steric factor and then proper and improper orientation orientation is also important for the case so this was the last question is oh. that clear yeah clear yes okay. now we are gonna start the new chapter that is electrochemistry and before starting that chapter i would like to just stop here and let me write the name of the chapter electrochemistry so i'm gonna write the basically i forgot to give you the name as i was quite oh, busy yeah, yeah. Yes. Electrochemistry. this is the exam time so i was quite busy okay So, do you have NCRT, right? You yeah, have NCRT, it. yes. Okay. I'm just going to write the name of the topics and you can easily then tell me which, okay. top, uh, which topic you are comfortable with. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, that there is a topic that is should I make it all black? Okay, yeah, no problem. Now see, first of all, there is a Daniel cell and Voltaic cell, then comes out to be, this is a Daniel cell and then Galvanic cell. Are you aware of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then electrode potential. No stick this. After that, no stick this. And then uh, conductance of electrolytic solution. Basically, this is your electric part, like resistance, resistivity, conductance, conductivity. Okay. And then for loss law. And then your comes out electrolysis, Faraday's law and all. Then there is electrochemical series. And then batteries. 
what do you think which is easy for you yeah uh one two and uh yeah one two and six only yeah that's it let's just start with a very basic it won't take a long time okay. so first of all this chapter or what we are going to talk about in this chapter in this chapter uh, basically this is a part of physical chemistry in which we are going to learn about the interaction of chemical energy into electrical energy chemical energy into electrical energy and electrical energy into chemical energy okay so this is what we are going to learn how we are going to convert chemical energy into electrical energy and electrical energy into chemical energy so in this chapter we have a topic or term that is electrochemical cell electrochemical cell and this cell is of two types this cell is of two types first is basically your galvanic galvanic or we say voltaic its other name is voltaic cell another is electrolytic cell another is electrolytic cell now why we divided this into two parts since both are cell so basically in this galvanic cell or voltaic cell this chemical energy converts into electrical energy chemical energy into electrical energy yeah. and in electrolytic cell electrical energy into chemical energy electrical energy into chemical energy so this is the basic difference electrical energy into chemical energy you need to be careful when i am talking about electrolytic cell and galvanic or voltaic cell is that clear okay yeah yeah and in this in this galvanic or voltaic cell there is a spontaneous redox release there will be a spontaneous redox release as you know that what is redox whenever uh, oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously that is known as redox reaction and this is electrochemical cell this is non spontaneous redox reaction non spontaneous redox reaction and i think you know what is spontaneous and what is non spontaneous can it, you tell me it moves it's like faster like spontaneous okay. is faster reaction can you repeat it again yeah uh, spontaneous means like a uh, faster reaction faster reaction okay uh, it's not the exact meaning that you are telling me basically if you have a slope like this okay and if you are going to drop a ball here will it be possible to come here on it no, no. on so you have to give some external agent external force or pressure to reach there right yeah. so non spontaneous reaction are the one in which external agents required external agents like temperature pressure are required okay, okay. and a spontaneous reaction are the one which occurs on its own like if you just uh, push the ball here it will go yes yes yeah. on its own there will be no need of any external agent that is known as a spontaneous reaction and we can easily uh, predict whether it is a spontaneous or non spontaneous if you know the value of delta g if delta g less than 0 that means a spontaneous and if delta g greater than 0 that means positive it is non spontaneous and if it delta g equals to 0 that means it is at equilibrium okay 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 so this is very easy i think yeah now it's very important to know you know what is conductor yes yes electricity can pass through them yeah so we are not going to spend a uh, waste time there this conductor is of two types first is metallic conductor and second is electrolytic conductor electrolytic conductor can you tell me the difference or we also call it ionic conductor okay uh, metallic is like so you, uh, purely solid 
and uh, oh, purely solid can you uh, if i'm going to ask you nsl is not pure solid is okay. nsl is also pure solid it is solid right yeah basically metallic solid is the one which can, which is metal we can okay. say that like okay. iron aluminum silver gold and electrolytic solid uh, sol, uh, electrolytic solute are the one which is ionic ionic compound you can say that okay ions where see what is the difference in metallic conductor the conductance is due to the electron free electron present in matter and in yeah. electrolytic or ionic conductors the conduct conduction is due to the free ions free ions nacl is also a pure solid right but if yeah. you are going to uh, dip it in aqueous solution you know what is the product na plus and cl minus and it is charged and this charge or ions are responsible for the conduction in electrolyte conduct okay. okay yeah <clears throat> okay so main point is that if you are going to conduct an electric uh, if a metal is conducted in electricity will there be any chemical change in conduct i uh, know no there will be no but what about this yeah there will be if you know the electrolysis there will be some changes at cathode or anode that you yeah. will see in electrolysis okay yeah well now there is a term this is very important to learn that is electrolyte do you know what is electrolyte that can be dissociated into ions that is called electrolyte right yeah so if i'm going to tell you C6H12O6. It is it is the formula of glucose. Have you seen that it is dissociated in two ions? No, no. You didn't see the it is dissociated in two ions. That means it is non-electron, right? Yeah. So electrolytes are the one which dissociate in two ions, and there are two types of electrolytes, and uh, one is basically a strong electrolyte, and another is Electrolyte. A strong electrolyte is the one which dissociates 100%, like NaCl dissociated into 100%. There are some compounds like uh, acid, you can say H2SO4, okay, and also HCl and also HNO3. There are some bases like NaOH. There are yeah. some salts like this, which 100% dissociated. That is a strong electrolyte. And when we are talking about weak electrolyte, that will be basically your organic acid or bases. We generally treat this organic acids that are not 100% dissociated. It dissociate 5%, 10%, 30% or organic bases. Organic bases like uh, you can take an example of NH3 or you can take an example of base like CH3, COOH. This is acid. So this oh. organic base and bases are basically your weak acid or organic uh, weak weak electrolyte base. Okay. Yeah. So this is the difference between a strong electrolyte and weak electrolyte. This is very important. Okay. Yes. Now there is now the electric part that you already know. What is resistance? You know the property of any conductor which resists the flow of charge that is yeah. denoted by R. And you know the Ohm's law V is equal to I R. And you also know the unit of this that is Ohm. And they denoted it as this, right? Yeah. yeah. Now the next is basically conductance. So opposite or inverse of conductance is denoted by C and it is inverse of resistance. So the unit will be per ohm. Or we also write it maho. That means it is opposite of this. Or we can write cement that is S. Okay. Is that clear? So these are some uh, additional that you know. you know what is a resistance conductance right yeah yeah now the next term comes out to be this a specific resistance or you also call it resistivity resistivity that denoted with and you know the resistance directly proportional to l and resistance inversely proportional to the area of cross section yeah. If you have a thick wire, the flow of charge is more. If you have thin wire, the flow of charge will be lesser. And if you are going to combine this length, it will be like this. 
and r will be equal to rho l by t right yes. so we can get a formula of rho that is resistivity that is r into a by l and from here you can easily obtain the uh, unit that is ohm meter or according to our use we can write ohm sign right okay now after a specific resistance uh, resistance or uh, resistivity there is another term that is a specific conductance a specific conductance or we also call it conductivity and this conductivity we denote it by kappa this is small k like a structure that is kappa okay. and this kappa is basically inverse of resistivity okay, okay. now you can see the unit of this was ohm meter or you can write ohm centimeter right yeah and for this you can write per ohm per centimeter right yes so so per ohm can also be written as maho per centimeter or you can also write you can also write this cement per centimeter per oh. cement meter maho meter maho per meter or like this are you getting yeah. my point These are yes. all some <coughs> the small terms that we need to take care. Of, okay. Now see, yeah. after we derive a formula, kappa is equal to one by rho, and you know what is rho? Rho is basically R into A by L. So can I write kappa will be equal to one by R into L by A? Yes. So this conductivity is basically equal to what is this this is conductance inverse of resistance yeah yeah yes into this l by a is known as cell constant cell constant and how we define cell constant its length of conductor per unit area of cross section length of conductor per unit area of cross section cross section of conductor got it yeah so this formula is also very very important <clears throat> can we move to the next part yeah yeah yes okay now there is a term that now you need to be careful that is molar that is for one more conductivity either we call it molar conductivity or molar conductance molar conductance and it is denoted by lambda m or in some books it is denoted by mu okay so here yeah. molar molarity we are talking about molarity so see lambda m will be equal to whatever is the conductivity into volume of solids just see whatever is the conductivity if you are going to dilute it that means you are going to make it more dilute that means addition of solvent will take place the particles of ions will go farther away from each other the force of attraction decreases so that they will be moving more faster than the earlier so at last molar conductivity increases so from that sense we wrote lambda m is equal to kappa into volume basically this molar conductivity directly proportional to the volume of solutes or directly proportional to the dilution of solutes are okay. you getting the point yeah yeah so we can write lambda m is equal to kappa into 1000 upon m in terms of molar in terms yeah. of molarity this is your molarity as you know <laughs> molarity is equal to number of moles of solute upon volume of solution in liter so if yeah. molarity increases number of moles of solute increases concentration increases and if concentration of solution increases that means it is concentrated solution that means the level or the amount of solvent is very low that means particles are near by each other they are attracting yeah. each other so cannot flow in the same speed as dilution so this is how we got a formula for lambda m okay okay yeah and the unit here is very easy per um, per centi uh, per ohm centimeter square per so we can write cm centimeter square per 
or we can write maho centimeter square curve in terms of centimeter. Please do that. This is important. You can take either a screenshot. <coughs> yeah, done. Very good. Very good. Now, so moving to the next question, that is equivalent conductivity. Equivalent. Either we say equivalent conductivity or either we say equivalent conductance. So see what it is. In the same way, we can define this. Equivalent, that means we are talking about the number of gram equivalent. Do you remember? Oh. Solution. Yeah, yes, a solution. Yeah. <laughs> the previous one was molarity. This is normality. So lambda EQ will be equal to again kappa into volume. And again, we can write lambda EQ is equal to kappa into thousand upon n. And okay. again, we can get a formula that is per ohm centimeter square per equivalent on the direction Siemens centimeter square per equivalent. In the previous one, it was per mole. And we can also write mole centimeter square per equivalent. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this is the difference between this. Now, yeah. A relation between a relation between molar conductivity and molar equivalent. Molar conductivity and equivalent conductivity. So, as you know, that you already know that normality is equal to n factor into molarity, right? Yes. <laughs> so, after putting the value, we can get lambda eq is equal to lambda mon upon valence factor or n. You know the formula lambda m will be equal to kappa into thousand upon n, and lambda yeah. eq is equal to kappa into thousand upon thousand upon n. And if I'm going to put the value kappa into 1000, at the place of n, I'm going to put molarity into valence factor, okay, or n factor. So oh. if I'm going to divide this lambda m upon lambda eq, lambda m is equal to kappa into 1000 upon m, and here it is kappa into 1000 upon, this is 1000, upon m into valence factor. So you can see that easily. Yes. Like this, yes or no? Yeah, yeah. And then you can get the value lambda e will be equal to lambda m upon balance. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is the relation that we need to take care of. Which is can you change the slide? Uh, wait, wait, isn't it supposed to be like lambda m is equal to Lambda EQ See, by it will go. It oh, will yeah, go upward. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So, lambda M is equal to lambda. You can see like this, or you can either like uh, write like this, right? Okay. Both yeah. are same. Yes, yes. Let me <laughs> let me know when to check this. Yeah, done, done. Yes. Now, question time. <laughs> The resistance constantly we are going to complete this up. Okay. So, so this is the calculate the conductance.
Okay. Am I visible? Uh, no, no, no. Power cut off. Oh. Let me know when you're done. Yeah, about to finish. So. The answer is uh, 10. What? 10, 10. 10. Yeah. <coughs> Wait. Now the next question. Last question. Which of the following have maximum molar content? Zero point zero eight M solution and its specific conductivity. This two into ten raised to the power minus per ohm per centimeter and B is zero point zero one M. And its resistivity
yeah uh, b as maximum molar conductivity which one b b the second one b yes very good now see it's b now see a new concept that is variation of molar conductivity and equivalent conductivity with concentration either if you are going to concentrate the solution or dilute either you are going to add solvent okay okay <clears throat> so the variation for a strong as well as weak electrolyte will be different will be different okay. as you can see that this is your weak electrolyte weak electrolyte and this is your a strong electrolyte <clears throat> well, a strong electrolyte if you are going to dilute the solute if you are going to dilute the solute that means you increases the volume right yeah yes and if you are going to dilute the solute that means concentration of solute decreases right yeah so that means force of attraction decreases and that's why ions can move more freely or more easily so conductance increases okay. yes or no yeah but one thing you have to remember or remind yourself is that this is a strong electrolyte so if you are going to dip this in water or in a solution this will be 100% dissociated right yeah <clears throat> only the variation in molar or electro uh, sorry, equivalent conductivity will be due to this lesser force of attraction so that they can move more easily but in case of weak electrolyte when you are going to dilute the solute dilution increases that means volume increases that means concentration decreases that means force of attraction decreases due to which more ions will be produced how does this possible as you can see that in a strong electrolyte already it is 100% dissociated there yes. cannot be more ions coming from that electrolyte but in yeah. weak electrolyte just suppose 10% initially dissociated but if you are going to do infinite dilution it will become more and more weak and then uh, the force of attraction becomes more and more weak and then some of new ions will be produced that's why conductance increases okay so can you tell me in which the conductance will be more after dilution is it weak electrolyte or a strong electrolyte uh, i think weak various no. basically various variation will be more in weak electrolyte because here new ions produced due to dilution and in a, a strong electrolyte variation will not be that much as compared to weak electrolyte because all ions are already produced only the difference is that they can move more faster than the Are you getting my point? Okay, okay, yes, yeah. Got it. Yeah. I'm gonna write a point. Effect of dilution. In V. Electrolyte <coughs> is more than. that of a strong electrolyte okay dilution will <coughs> more than that of a strong electrolyte 
got it okay. now see uh, just take a screenshot can i change the slide uh wait a minute uh... Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. See, conductivity decreases when dilution. Conductance increases, but when dilution increases, conductivity decreases. Always keep it in mind because conductivity defined for one mL and density decreases. That's why conductivity. also decreases is that clear very if very you are going to do if you are going to do dilution that means you are going to increase the volume and if you are going to increase the volume that means density of ion in 1 ml decreases or density of ion decreases yes yeah. or no because volume increases and when density of ion decreases conductivity <clears throat> also decreases i'm going to define conductivity in terms of this volume so we can define conductivity kappa is basically conductance due to conductance due to all the ions present in 1 ml present in 1 ml electrolyte actually see <clears throat> we will take only 1 ml electrolyte and since with increase in volume sorry with increase in dilution volume increases and volume increases that means density of solution decreases and we just define conductivity in terms of density and uh, volume and since density decreases conductivity also decreases <coughs> please review this and let me know i got it very 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 Uh, so uh, in the other case uh, it increase right yeah yeah just read this conductance due to all the ions present in 1 ml electrolyte you if you have 1 ml electrolyte if volume is increasing that means <clears throat> they will be farther away from each other that means volume increases density decreases in which they can interact Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. In terms okay. of density, we just define, and volume increases, density decreases, and conductivity also decreases. Okay. So now you can see lambda m is equal to very kappa into thousand upon m, and lambda m, lambda e q is equal to kappa into thousand upon m, right? Yeah. as you can see that molarity is inversely proportional to volume and normality is also inversely proportional to volume right yeah so with the dilution molarity decreases yes or no yes and if molarity decreases that means molar conductivity should increase inversely proportional because yeah, they yeah, yeah. yes and if with dilution kappa decreases that means Molar conductivity should decrease. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, but what happens? See, I'm gonna take this also like this and this with dilution, okay. like this. But by experiment, with experiment, with the help of experiment, this molarity and normality dominate for kappa. That's why. With the dilution, molar conductivity and equivalent conductivity increases. Okay. 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 Done. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Done. Very good. I'm gonna plot a graph. 
and this graph is in between molar conductivity siemens centimeter square per mole and concentration raised to the power half or we can write root c and c is basically your concentration if you are going to plot the graph for a weak electrolyte it will be like this this is for ch3c double h oh. <clears throat> and this is for kcl that means a strong electrolyte is that clear yes uh, kcl it's electrolyte. it's down or straight strong line it's straight line it's a straight line like downward like this okay okay so yeah. see how we are going to read this graph it's very important if you are going to move to the left hand side can you tell me whether the value of concentration increases or decreases yeah decreases yeah. concentration decreases that means dilution what yes, will be yes. the effect on dilution okay what will be the effect on dilution whether it, it will increase or decrease yeah concentration decreases yeah then dilution is increasing yeah dilution increases yes. <clears throat> so you can see with the increase in dilution the variation in a strong electrolyte is very very low as compared to weak electrolyte yes variation yes. can you look at the variation yeah yeah <clears throat> well, so this is the variation in a weak as well as a strong electrolyte for <clears throat> what we say dilution uh, and dilution. Now there is a debate Huckel equation that is especially for a strong electrolyte for a strong electrolyte form. Okay. Strong electrolyte form. And this is basically a straight line. That's why we give an equation that is lambda m is equal to lambda naught m minus a c raised to the power half. As you can see that this is on y axis or x axis. This is on y axis. They are directly proportional to each other. There is negative sign. So you can see the graph is downward. Also, yeah. this will be your constant or uh, slope this will be your c right c yeah intercept yeah, <laughs> yeah this is for maybe our people equation only for a strong okay. it a, what is a? a is basically you can say this is constant or slope basically it is constant if you look at it. okay okay please do let me know when you are done with this Yeah, done. Very good. Now let's see. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> then there is a rule, or we. It's a very important. And if you will look at previous year question, there are a lot of questions on this topic. Full rod slot. Independent migration of ions, and it is for a strong as well as okay. Okay, so <clears throat> we collect. I'm just going to define it. This law states that. Should I define it? Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, I have to get because this is very important. This law states that the equivalent conductor Of 
any electrolyte, the equivalent conductivity of any electrolyte at infinite dilution. Infinite dilution. That we call it lambda naught EQ. Is the sum of is the sum of equivalent conductivity of its ions at infinite ends. <laughs> infinite <coughs> dilutes. So it's very easy. If you have NaCl and you are going to calculate the equivalent, infinite equivalent dilution of NaCl, you can easily write it the equivalent conductivity of Na plus because it will be dissociated into two parts. Na plus plus Cl minus then it will be like lambda EQ Cl minus. What it? Yeah. So please take a screenshot. Yeah, okay. Done. Now see, it's very easy. If you have MGCL, then lambda EQ infinity of MGCL will be as it is. If you are going to do this mg plus 2 plus 2 cl minus so it will be lambda eq naught of mg plus 2 and then lambda eq of cl minus. since equivalent concept we don't need to balance it okay oh, yeah so anymore you don't need to do with that but take care of when you have molar conductivity and mole concept is all about balancing so if you are going to write the molar conductivity of this, this will be molar conductivity of Mg plus 2. And since only one mole is there, so no problem. Now, but here you can see 2 mole of Cl minus. So it will be 2 into like this. Oh, okay. okay. If it's equal equivalent conductivity, that's okay. But when it comes about molar conductivity, just balance it according to the mole. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Can I change the slide? Uh, yes. Uh... Yeah, okay, change. So, I'm gonna give you lambda not infinity of L to SO4. Can you write? The... what it will be lambda m naught 2 into lambda naught m l plus 3 plus 3 into lambda m naught so minus but if you are going to write the equivalent conductivity of this it will be as it is equivalent l plus 3 Okay, okay, yeah. 